Welcome everybody to my first installment of Space Engineers, where we are playing survival, as you can see, on a ship I created particularly for survival, because I suck at playing games, and hopefully this thing works as well as it needs to, though as my life's going to be you know. This is also a test to see if the ship also works in survival. front of the ship and go from there on back and fill the ship into everything it has.
Pressurize it, basically we're starting to create, use the oxygen, the ice in there to create oxygen and so forth. All the doors world. And yeah, I want to hit the button. And our next part. our hangar, which is only a top door hangar. I thought it was probably pretty decent design. Um, I'm back on. I'm gonna set the room to depressurize so I don't lose any of my oxygen. All the oxygen will go into the tank. So that I'm left with the oxygen probably to read the works. Okay, we're depressurized, from which I can then Give you an entire outward tour of it, and then go back into the inner tour. It's probably all this, video, this whole video is going to be as a tour of my ship. I have my last gear on. This is my drilling ship, so I can get gather materials for my ship to keep surviving. No grinder ship, no welder ship, no fighter, because, well, even though I could have contacts out here, I'm not too worried about them right now, because I think it's still glitched where they're just on planets right now, and I have to set the planets. As you will be able to see if I can see. Oh, yep, yeah, there we go. Planet. We. Over here, we got my little ship. Fully capable, fully oxy oxygenated. Uh, obviously, no hydrogen, but it works. From the outside, you can see I've powered it up with plenty of solar panels. In case I ever get caught in the gravity well of a planet, I have plenty of atmospheric thrusters to deal with that. Trust me, this took a long time to figure out how many I would need. A long time. And a lot of these ships crashing into the planet. <laughs> of course, over here you can see the exterior of our emergency drop pods. In case the ship were to, I don't know, have problems and have to be abandoned in some sort of worst case scenario. And then to the back. It's not, a, I would say it's, it's not meant to be a fast ship. Unless it's a quicker in the atmosphere, and it's really stupid fast. I got a decent amount of thrusters, I guess. Maybe, probably not. You guys be like, oh, that's sucky wide. Why is this ship so small compared to other ships I've seen built? I'm like, 
this one's just supposed to be an all-purpose survival game. And as you see, I even included the little connector for connecting this ship so I can put stuff in there. That's why I was at this asteroid. GPS coordinates for a uh, particular location of the actual Earth like planet. Alright, side dust was just up on this thing. Now land it ever so cautiously. And yes, I do have ice. Actually, there's actually a lot of room. Before, I always kept feeling like there wasn't enough room for me to land this. And we have landed, and I can close the doors. Pressurizing. Pressurize. Now, the next compartment, I mainly designed it out of the pure simple idea of designing. I just wanted to see what I could do to make something a little bit more unique. So I decided to make a crossing glass bridge. It is better when it, on the first initial design, the, the Mark 1. Because first off, this wall wasn't here. There's a thruster behind the thrust, uh, atmospheric thruster behind this wall, as you saw from the uh, my video. Of, well, me flying my ship over, and you should have seen that there's three thrusters in the center portion, two on this side and one on this side, with the wall that I separated this one because this one was too close. But it was whatever. It's what I needed to fly in the atmosphere. This is one day, hopefully, this thing will make an atmosphere in the survival series. Yeah, coming from there, you can see these glass panels. Everything's mostly symmetrical, so everything on this side is going to be on that side. Spare gyroscopes in case the engine room were to have catastrophic malfunction and destroy everything. So that's why I also have battery cells in here. So the ship can remain powered on for whatever short amount of time it needs. And up here, it's really just more gyroscopes and storage. Can't go wrong with more storage. I feel like my other side's a little bit different. Check. So I think that tube, you saw the tube there running from the conveyor tube. I don't think this one did. Oh, yeah, it did. Well, continuing on with the video. Here we have my cryo tubes that you saw in the beginning portion of this video. I just thought, well, we got a spaceship with the jump drives, two of them to be exact. I have cryo tubes, whatever you want to call them. Of course, our unique and special air system. This is about where it comes into the main portion of the ship instead of being exteriorly guarded and is the outside. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think Get hurt by my doors. Door, door. Get hurt. Oh, nope. Didn't get hurt. I am. We did. And we're into our main area bay, right below the observation and flight deck. Everything is functional. And I say functional lightly because before I go up to the bridge, this is where some things are going to get finicky because, like here, this entire room is based around its own oxygen supply. I've done only two rooms like this. 
And that's particularly because of the importance of the room. This is the engine room. Very important to have a ship running. So if anywhere else would you fault, have a break in the lines, this has its own separate oxy oxygen supply, along with all the yellow you know, reactors and shit, and gyroscope, batteries out the ass, and the two jump drives that power this thing to go places. Initial objective is to eventually get to Mar the Mars-like planet. This is, you know, it's like in-game. Where's this planet at? There you are. There's the alien world way off over there to the right. Right over there. Get the ship moving. Probably going to take a pit stop over here. And what's our speed looking? Can we, we've maxed out our terminal velocity. Turn the dampeners off so I don't have to use any energy whatsoever to forward with a fuel time of three days. I think that would be good. The ship is pretty much ready for survival as far as I can see. Now as for like the drill, the secondary drill ship, it does not exactly come with the ship. It used to, until I realized it would glitch with the front of the ship in atmosphere. And when it was in atmosphere, I'd notice that my ship would have a tendency to do, you know, just like a sinking motion, the front would go down. I removed that ship. From the docking platform up here, which, you know, the connector, right, right, right there. I removed it from there, tossed it away, and would you know, the, the ship managed to stay hovering correctly without it dipping into the ground, which had claimed the life of the ship prior to this one. So, any thoughts or comments about this ship? Would be greatly appreciated because this is my of my own design i built it from the ground up initially in creative mode designed almost only particularly for creative mode and i was like you know what it's big enough let's try and make it survival worthy now this is the beginning video of my survival series we're going to this asteroid here see if we can pick up any useful supplies such as iron silicone you know anything really just anything because we need everything. <laughs> it's pretty bad. Yep. Wee. Wee. The camera's on. Looks like we got a decent amount of asteroids here in the close area, so. With that being good. You know, probably be a good idea to turn off my. Or I know this was just the battery was one bar low. It probably is running off the battery power only right now. Oh yeah, reverse thrusters are right under the bridge. Something different, I suppose. Instead of you know having them in the front, kind of like how my atmospheric thrusters are for reverse. So, yeah, there they are. Okay, where, where's the disaster at? Oh look, we got ice. That's always useful. And I'm going to cut episode here and probably continue off tomorrow. Thank you everybody so much for watching.
please comment and tell me how my ship is. I think it's pretty unique and different. I know I'm not as smooth around the edges as most other people's ships like to be, but I like it. It gives it more of a rugged look. Rugged, you know, can take hits, and yeah. So, thank you everybody so much for watching. Please like and subscribe videos of Mike, mine, because one subscriber doesn't really do too great. Goodbye. That, that, that makes everything so much easier and better. And now I can go faster.